Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick, and it is Thursday, September 17th. And I'm here today to join you for our daily devotion. We're going to be reading from the book of Colossians, and we're in the fourth letter of Colossians. We've pretty much read through the whole book in the last week or so. So if you'd like, please turn with me now to uh, Colossians chapter 4, and we'll finish the rest of this chapter. Masters, treat your bondservants justly and fairly, showing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the world to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know you ought to answer each person. Tychius will tell you about all my activities. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. And with him, Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they will tell you everything that has taken place here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions, if he comes to you, welcome him, and Jesus, who is called Justice. These are fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always struggling on your behalf and his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has worked hard for you, and for those in Laodicea and in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, greets you, as does Demas. Give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, see that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write you this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. So this is uh, one of Paul's uh, imprisonment epistles, you could say. He is writing this letter to the Colossians from prison, uh, where if you remember in the book of Acts, he was arrested uh, for going to Jerusalem, and then he appealed to Rome, and then he went through this whole process where he went to Caesarea Philippi, and then he's, he's now uh, in Rome uh, awaiting trial. So uh, he's there under house arrest for a period of two years, and he's writing these epistles uh, to the Colossians for one. And uh, he, he references, I, I said this yesterday, the, the Laodiceans. Um, Laodicea was only about 19 miles away from Colossae. So the two congregations would have been very close in, uh, in proximity. And uh, they probably would have been like-minded in, in many things, being of a similar, uh, living in a similar area and, uh, and having some things in common. Uh, Paul here encourages that the letter to the Colossians be read also to the Laodiceans and that their letter be read uh, to the Colossians. So we see the, the, you know, the beginnings here of, of the biblical canon of the New Testament coming together, uh, where these letters that Paul uh, is writing are shared among the various congregations. Uh, we don't have the letter to the Laodiceans. We don't know what happened to the letter. Presumably it was uh, probably destroyed in the persecution uh, that followed. Uh, although, if we read the book of uh, Revelation, Laodicea is mentioned as the last of uh, the seven churches. So perhaps the persecution came upon them shortly after that. They likely had their letter in their possession for some 50 years, and then following the persecution uh, of that early church time period, it was, it was probably then lost. But uh, Paul also references a number of his fellow workers, Luke, the gospel writer Luke, he talks about uh, Onesimus, who we've heard about before, uh, probably related to uh, the Onesimus uh, mentioned in the book of Philemon. And, uh, you know, so, some other people as well, uh, whom Paul was, was close to. It is interesting that he doesn't really reference any of the other apostles at that time. 
really the most well-known of, of the bunch would be Luke, the gospel writer. So, uh, but, but they are visiting him there in Rome, coming to him. He's allowed to have people come to his house there in Rome and in prison and to comfort him and encourage him. He's trying to encourage the, uh, the, the fellow saints of the Christian church at the time with prayers and with supplications and with encouragements. Um, you know, knowing that we have this common mission to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins and the salvation of the whole world. So, let's continue now by praying together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, well, some uh, announcements for today. Uh, I know that uh, our email newsletter was sent out yesterday, and so you saw a number of things in there. One of the things that I, I did want to point your attention to that I also did yesterday was just uh, I put some information in there about the, uh, the playground, uh, that we are in need of a new playground and... Uh, perhaps if you feel that the Lord has, has blessed you, uh, we're, we're hoping to raise some additional donations for the playground so that we can move forward with making this, uh, uh, this playground a part of our preschool ministry and also a part of our church ministry here as well because we know that we have a number of, of children here in our church who do use the playground. Uh, but we are currently, uh, I would say, around the neighborhood of $7,000 short which um, I, I know we just finished the, the chancel uh, fundraising campaign and now to bring this, we, the, the Lord has given us a, a number of opportunities and also uh, needs that we have uh, simultaneously. So uh, if, if you would like to contribute to that, uh, you can simply earmark your gift playground and, and put it in the, uh, the offering plate and uh, we'll make sure that we, uh, we get that and, and credit it towards the playground. We are hoping to move forward something soon. So. Uh, we're continuing to pray to the Lord that, uh, that he'll enable us to do so. Uh, I do want to point out our scripture verse of the month. I, I haven't done this in a little bit. This is from uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 16. It is our final verse that talks about um, communion. And uh, yeah, beginning here at verse 16, my eyes will co cooperate. Uh, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? So, some real sacramental theology there that Paul is talking to the Corinthians about, which we use also to establish the real presence, that Christ truly is present in, with, and under the bread and wine uh, in the sacrament that we partake of during the divine service. So, I wish the Lord's blessings to be upon you for this rest of your Thursday. Deaconess Elizabeth will be here with you tomorrow for your daily devotions. And then uh, both of us should be here on Saturday. The Lord bless the rest of your week.